we decided to send out a, send out a letter. So the first action we took towards this was sending this letter. The idea of the letter was being able to assess, to understand how our clients, how our partners are seeing the situation, are working, but we really, really reduced structures. So that is also affecting the quality because when a client asks for a coffee to be delivered to, to them, the coffee is going to get their code or not as good as it would be. So for, especially for the shops that work with specialty coffee, this is a huge challenge because it's affecting not only their revenue, but their ability to offices, for example. Those, some of those, they have temporarily closed their operations because they are getting no revenue at all. Supermarkets sales have in increased a lot on the other side. So that means that those roasters, they are selling supermarkets. They are still being able to, to sell quite a lot of coffee. And a lot of that is actually motivated by panic buying. So many people are actually buying not only coffee, but any goods they need for their homes. They're buying and stocking up food and anything that they need for them to be at home. So there is a lot of panic buying going on. So roasters, they are selling supermarkets. They are going through the situation in a smoother way than others. Lots of understandings of what specialty is. Some people will consider specialty 85, 86 plus. Some people consider 80 plus. So when I say specialty, I mean 80 plus. Let's talk lower specialty 80 to 85, higher specialty 85 and above. And when I say commercial, I mean anything that is below 80 points, okay? And then there are lots of different categories, as you guys know, in the commercial side. Many roasters right now are also canceling or postponing. So everything else that is not uh, in this in this, in this this specific uh, jobs in the roastery, they are just furloughing or dismissing workers. This is happening a lot at the moment as well, which means that when those roasters go back to working normally, they're going to go through some difficult, difficult times also with staff, with lower staff and, and trying to adapt to go back to normal. Well, talking about the next part of the industry, importers, which is what you guys are. So we have heard a little bit from each of you guys. So we compiled the information that we got from our partners as well and from other importers that we have talked. Uh, companies, they require certif certification and also consumers, even though they are they are consuming coffee in a different way, they're not consuming coffee in the coffee shops that, as they use it too, they're consuming at home. Consumers, they are more aware and some roasters, they are simply not paying or delaying their payments or asking for better payment terms, uh, asking to pay uh, the coffee in different installments. So probably all of you have seen that already. Some of our causing uh, capacity problem in the warehouses right now. And at the same time, even though all of that is happening, many importers are also afraid of running out of stock for their big accounts due to delays in shipments. Because as you guys might know, there are some shipping lines they are already canceling uh, vessels or maybe they are canceling containers or postponing containers. So there are some delays happening. I'd like to ask you as well to share with us, to share with our partners, what are the solutions that you are putting into place to make sure that your business is going. Thank you very much for the uh, this meeting. So today I explained to the, our uh, mission. So many cafe and restaurant is temporary closed. Uh, famous chain, uh, Famous chain store cafe is also temporary closed. Uh, for example, Tari's Coffee, uh, that, that is a famous cafe, uh, they close 450 stores, and Dodor is uh, 250 stores now. Uh, on the other hand, coffee consumption is uh, in house is going up during this time uh, due to a request to, to not go to outside. Uh, this trend is not only regular coffee, but also soluble coffee also. Uh, regarding RTD, ready to drink, the sales is go down. Due to a decreased opportunity to go out. RTD is mainly sold by the vending machine in Japan, so decreased opportunity to go out affects those products. And what's the smart solution to your putting into place to guarantee success? So our strategy of green coffee sales operation during the, those times uh, strengthens the online sales. We are considering a new sales promotion, for example, uh, subscription, subscription sales and commodity coffee sales by online and so on. Online sales will increase after the end of the coronavirus also. So we would like to continue the strengthening the sales activity. And we cannot visit abroad or customer now. And Japanese economy continues the deflation now, so they cannot raise the price.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Noguchi and Michizaki from Kanematsu. Next, we have Philip and Priscilla from DR Wakefield in the UK. I'm Phil, if I haven't met you before, from DR Wakefield in one of our many home offices we have at the moment. Um, so, um, yeah, what we've seen. Um, the other is, like you said, talking to our customers to understand where they are. So then we can manage our stock. And like Phil said, we have to find a new warehouse to store coffee. Um, and then the other as well, it just try to find opportunistic sales to have um, still a quite high source of revenue. So knowing like customers are going to take the coffee later, we try to find opportunistic sales with um, some of the roster needs for supermarkets. Um, so to roasters or customer will not sell usually, we're going to do it because we need revenue. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Priscilla. Thank you, Phil, for sharing what you guys are doing at DR Wakefield at the moment. So our next uh, partner that is going to share some thoughts with us is Giovanna from Maretera in Spain. Hi, Giovanna. Hi, guys. How are you? Um, yeah, so for those who don't know me, um, I'm Giovanna. Uh, I work in Maretera in Barcelona. Uh, we also have two other colleagues listening on the call. Uh, Alfonso, he's our um, commercial director, and we have Axel uh, listening in the call as well. He's our quality uh, lab director. So they we're all here to try and see what's the situation, but I think uh, your summary is um, perfect. <laughs> Um, at the end of the day, uh, we are importers and our problems are basically what the coffee shops and what the roasteries are seeing. These are the same problems. It's all kind of, it's all connected. It's all a, a snowball, isn't it? Um, and I don't think our situation is much different from uh, uh, Philip and, um, and Priscilla. Um, uh, volumes have been down. Things have been very slow since March. Uh, we've been in lockdown completely uh, from the second week of March and things in Spain have been quite serious as you might have seen and heard news. So everything is, clo is closed and is very strict and the neighboring countries that we're, we're, our neighboring countries are basically are worse or in very similar situations as us. So uh, till about last week, uh, the only things that were allowed to uh, be open were supermarkets and pharmacies and everything else was completely closed and even movement is very uh, controlled here. So it's been quite uh, tough. Um, but I think as per your su summary, we have a few roasters that are still open. Uh, these are roasters that had fresh uh, people coming together to start roasting businesses. So we do see and uh, that some people will really struggle and some people will close uh, over from now to the mark to being a bit more flexible. So we're still in the in the situation where we still have to wait and see. We don't. It's very difficult to predict how bad it will affect everyone and, and which are uh, and at each um, at what extent. Um, we see people trying to adapt their coffee shops, doing uh, adapt to web shops and um, propose packages and new promotions and that's going. And we also hear uh, now from clients that are thinking about the next step. So people that had coffee shops and bakeries and restaurants, how they're going to adapt the business uh, to when the lockdown starts coming off. So, you know, even if it's officially uh, finished. I don't think people really hang out in coffee shops and restaurants that long anymore for a while. So they're talking about takeaway business and new products and how they can adapt their own businesses to do that. Um, but we've been now onto the solutions. I guess we've been in contact with everyone. We've been uh, open and doing home office like uh, most people. Um, we've had the warehouse open. Uh, all this time, although with limited capacity, things can take a little longer because there are fewer staff working because of safety protocols. Um, so warehouse has been open tables, one in each corner of the office, two, two people cupping. And then we, we started, we just finished that. We couldn't even move and leave the house. So we had our hero that it's in the call, Axel, he's been going to the office and getting those things moved. 
uh, alone, completely alone. Um, so that's the way that we find that things can, you know, move. Um, but uh, so far we've had, it's not a coronavirus um, uh, solution, but we've been working for a long time in the web, show, in the web uh, page in the way that all our technical sheets and our info sheets are complete and open on the web. So if clients were asking for samples, we would mainly direct them to the web so they could see all the profiling, all the information they needed uh, for the coffees there. Uh, but uh, since uh, I think maybe last week, 10 days ago, we've reopened the lab for samples. We're sending samples out and that's a way that we're uh, trying to communicate, keep that communication with clients ongoing. So for when this all finishes, uh, they already have the samples. They are uh, the ones that are open can try the coffees. Um, so that's still ongoing. Um, so I guess that's mainly it. I think the 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 situation is not very difficult for in, in Europe or from what you've already explained. And uh, I don't think we've had too many problems with contracts, maybe a few here and there. I think um, in our last exchange, we've discussed about maybe how small roasteries don't really uh, honor or don't really understand contracts. But so, so far, things have been good. Uh, we've tried to be a bit flexible as well. So, yeah, I think in, in general, that's about it. That's what we, what's happening here in Spain. Thank you very much for, for sharing, Giovanna. That was very, very clear. Now, the next person that would like to share the thoughts with us is Matt from Coffee Holding in the USA. Hi, I'm Matt from Coffee Holding in New York. Um, situation here is very similar to what we heard about in the UK and in Spain. Um, all the small, medium roasters and coffee shops are all closed at the moment. Um, the ones that are open are primarily just uh, doing e-commerce or retail. Uh, so it has put a strain for us on uh, inventory. We've had a lot of inventory buildup, um, which I'm sure everyone else has had. So it's just been trying to maneuver and move inventory around and try to move it out as quick as it's coming in at the moment. We haven't had anyone walk away from contracts, but as Giovanni, Giovanna said, uh, smaller roasters don't really understand or grasp the concept. They say they're going to be around, but who knows? So a uh, daily at least daily or every other day, we try to keep in contact with the, the high risk clients, which are the coffee shops and the pop up and the startup companies that we have as clients here, because they're really the people that will walk away and there's nothing to go after and then on the coffee that they have. Um, but besides that, I mean, the future besides us constantly calling and making ourselves available for clients and knowing that we're here and try to come up with solutions defer deliveries out further for them it's going to be a very interesting market when it, we finally reopen here in the us like was has been said previously the food service industry the coffee shops are going to be they're going to have to reinvent themselves or they're not going to stay around like was said i mean no one's going to go into a coffee shop and sit down and hang out for a couple hours and talk with people and even with dinners i mean going to high-end restaurants and you're sitting there and a table is five feet from you are you going to feel comfortable sitting there so it's going to i think the whole food service and coffee shop and all that i think it's going to have to really reinvent itself and i think everything's going to be going more to a almost a drive-through or fast casual you walk in, get your drink and you walk right out. So it's not going to, no longer are the days, at least near term, will be that you sit in a coffee shop all day is how we're looking at it. So we're trying to push or steer clients that are in that field to look at how they can reinvent themselves to being like a fast casual and volume over, you know, the typical coffee shop per se. But other than that, it's, I mean, I think everyone is said the same. It's no different here in the US than it was in UK or Spain or in Japan. I mean, it's slow. So you just try to stay relevant and in touch with all your clients. And that's about it. Thank you very much, Matt, for sharing your thoughts. That was great as well. Our next speaker is Kevin from Theta Reed, also in the US. 
Hi, Kevin. How are you? Good. How are you all? Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm Kevin Kyers from Theta Ridge Coffee in the United States, South Bend, Indiana. Things are okay here. We're down about 50% in sales, um, but that was to be expected with what is all going on here. Many of our customers have closed, as uh, many of you have mentioned already. Some are open with uh, curbside uh, pickup or they are fortunate to have a drive through so they can remain open. Most of our restaurants are open as well, but only for drive through We can still go around a little bit, not as much as we would like to. One good thing here is that we have an online store for home roasters. So we sell to a home roaster market and we've seen an uptake in that in our online store for sales there. In fact, yesterday alone, we sold three roasting machines to home roasters who probably have never thought about doing it before, but because they're stuck at home, what else are they gonna do? Um, so we're excited about that. Some of our customers, our new customers on our online store will order the green coffee. Uh, they'll get their order. They'll call us and say, okay, now what do we do? How do we roast this? So um, there's a number of people who are now using um, um, a st a cast iron skillets on the stove and uh, roasting their coffee that way. Our larger customers, of course, most of them are closed as well. Uh, we are in contact with them, um, trying to work out payment uh, issues like all the rest of you are having. Um, most of them have been extended uh, to later on once they reopen. Hopefully they'll reopen. Some have told us they are closing permanently because they can't make it through this time. Uh, we here at Theta Ridge has all, have also applied for the PPP. I don't know if you've all heard of that, which is the Paycheck Protection Program here in the United States. And once that comes in, uh, we will be able to remain open for at least the next eight weeks. Uh, that will pay for our employees to continue to work. Uh, there are four of us who work here, and we are open every day, Monday through Friday, and we are able to still ship out coffee, uh, either pallets or uh, small orders to our online store customers. Um, as far as what we're doing, we're continuing to work with our customers um, uh, to get payments. Uh, we're also working with our vendors to uh, see if we can extend our payments out uh, further. Um, any new purchases out know, the same way. Um, we're all coming up with creative ways to um, extend payments out, paying a little bit here, then maybe in a few more weeks pay, pay some more. Um, so that's really it's really about all that's happening here in South Bend, Indiana. Thank you very much for sharing, Kevin. Uh, Kevin was our last partner to share. Uh, the situation and also what are the solutions that you're putting into place. So now I'm going to start sharing then with you our solutions here at the Terra. Okay, so for us here at the Terra, uh, we started discussing and seeing this whole situation with the COVID and we started seeing how this could affect us a long time ago. We, we saw this was starting in the end of last year uh, in Asia and the signs were showing that this would really go to the whole world and affect everyone just like it is affecting right now. Uh, so we started discussing and planning what we could do as some measures to mitigate the impacts for us as a business and for our partners a long time ago. We started making our first meetings to, to discuss this and to talk about this, this issue in February. So in February, we already were seeing how this was developing, how this was going, uh, taking, taking over the whole world. And then we started discussing some, some ideas. Uh, we have created some strategies, some different measures uh, uh, here at the farm level, and also some, some ideas that involve you guys, that involve our partners, that involve the roasters as well. So we can try to help everyone going through the situation in a smoother way and try to mitigate as much as possible the impacts that this will have in our in our industries, okay? So I'm gonna share them with you right now. So first of all, change the screen. First of all, on the, on the farm side, 
uh, as I said, there is a lot. There are lots of concerns right now involving the how coffee farms, how origins are going to be able to operate, how they're going to be able to harvest, how they're going to be able to keep the quality, the production at these very uncertain moments, especially because this might affect labor, this might affect their operations uh, in general. So again, we started discussing this a long time ago, and because we have at the Terra uh, a very strong culture of planning ahead, of trying to see what's going to happen and the impacts before they actually happen. Uh, in February, we started coming up with some plans and we came up with many different strategies for everything that might go on at the farm during this time. So pretty much we sat down, Luis, our agronomic engineers, our mechanization uh, specialists, everyone in the different sectors of the operations at the farm, we have sat down with them in many different meetings and together we have created uh, a strategy, a plan, many plans actually, to go through the situation regardless of what happens. So first of all, what we have done, we have really written down all the possible scenarios that could happen if the situation of the outbreak really gets bad, really, really bad, or if the situation is bad, but not so much, mild, or if the situation is manageable. So we created four different scenarios for the, from the most pessimistic one, which is we don't have people to work, we don't have, we are not able to bring anyone to the farm to work this year. And as you guys know, uh, every year we bring lots of workers, temporary workers to work at the farm to, to help us be able to, to harvest the coffee and take care of the operations at the farm. So in a scenario that the outbreak, the, the, the outbreak is really bad and we have maybe the states in Brazil closing their borders, uh, we are not allowed to bring workers from other states because we bring workers from the northeast part of Brazil every year to work at the harvest. So we have that scenario written down and all the contingency plans that we can have to make sure we're going to be able to perform the same way, that we're going to be able to deliver the same quality, that we're going to be able to have a decent production and be able to, to, to supply you with the coffee and to deliver uh, the, the, the beans and the quality and the quantity that we are expected to. So we have from the most pessimistic one to the one that is not so pessimistic, but with some restraints and to the one that is a little op optimistic and the one that is very optimistic. And we have plans A, B, C, D, E, Z for each of those scenarios. And these plans, though we have mapped out all the possibilities all the difficulties that we could have in the harvesting, mecha mechanized harvesting, hand picking, uh, hand stripping, uh, drying process, processing units, wet meal. So what we could do as plans A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth, in each of those areas, if any of those scenarios is the real scenario. So one thing that I can, I can tell you for sure is we have mapped many possibilities, so we are ready, sort of, of course, nobody was ready for what is going on at the moment, but we were able to create some pretty nice strategies to go through this situation and go around many of the challenges that might, we might have to face in the, these next few weeks or months that are coming up. So this is something that's very important. Of course, uh, if any of those scenarios happen, it's not going to be the optimal scenario, which is a regular year that we can just harvest the coffee, but we are doing what it, we are doing our part to make sure we're going to be able to perform regardless of what, what happens. Well, so these are the scenarios. Those scenarios, of course, there are possibilities. Uh, we have the plans for them, but what is the most a uh, possible scenario to actually happen this year and what we are seeing that's going to be what we're going to have to face very soon. So we have a master plan for what we are seeing that's going to happen this year. So, so far uh, in our area, 
we are not seeing lots of difficulties at the moment because the the virus is spreading more in the big cities in the, the big metropolitan areas as well so sao paulo rio there are some specific big cities they are going through a, a more difficult time uh the big metropolitan areas they are going through a difficult time as well but luckily the farm is in a in a remote area it's a rural area it's far from those big centers uh it has a reduced traffic from people from those big centers to that area as well so right now we are not having lots of problems in the area we, we are so the chances that this takes over the region where we are they are much smaller than the big cities so apparently we're not going to have a lot of problem there what are the what are the regions that in brazil they are going to have a big problem this year so especially the regions that are closer to those big metropolitan centers those big cities they might have bigger problems and the regions that are very very dependable on labor on hand harvesting especially either for hand picking or hand stripping in our case we are lucky to have a big mechanized structure 90 percent of our coffee is harvest, har harvested mechanically. So this allows us to be able to, to perform better with less people. So it might affect us, but we, we have this advantage as well. When you think about south of Minas Gerais, uh, Mantiqueira area, or the mountain areas in Brazil where we have coffee being planted in more hilly areas, those areas they're gonna struggle more because people, they're not traveling as much and pickers travel. We People in any coffee producing areas in Brazil, they depend on people that come from other states to those coffee growing areas to pick the coffee. In our case, we need that as well, but we need less than other people probably, even with our, our size and, and everything. Um, what we are doing as well, we we are trying to bring people in different teams so instead of bringing all the workers at once in the beginning of the harvest we are bringing those workers in different teams so we have mapped what are the quantities of cherries what are the quantities of the, of coffee that we have to harvest and to process in week one week two week three week four looking at the data that we have from the past from previous years we, are, we, we can foresee how much coffee is going to be coming in in every, in every week of the harvesting season. And instead of bringing everyone at the same time, we're going to be bringing people in different teams. So we have less people, we have less agglomeration and the farm at the same time. So this is one of the things that is going to help a lot for us to be able to deliver the amount of, to be able to prepare and harvest the amount of coffee that we're going to have coming in every week without uh, being them without having damages or being not being able to harvest this coffee because we have less people. We have planned better the the distribution of people. Many of the people that we bring they come from our northeast part of Brazil, as I said, and we we depend usually on agencies to look for those people for us in those places. Right now, those agencies they are closed as well, so they are not they are not working. Uh, but we have been working with the same people for many years. Even though they don't live nearby, they come back every year. So we were able to contact all of them. We were able to make the plans for them to come. Instead of putting together a buzz of people coming from our feast all at once, we are paying for them to come uh, individually to the farm. So they're coming uh, not in, in big groups anymore, but in smaller groups, which, which also helps not spreading the virus as much. Uh, because they're coming from other regions, it's very important that we protect also the workers that are at the farm right now. So what we are doing, we are doing screening with all those people before they come to the farm as well. So we are checking if they're going through magical checkups before leaving their states, before leaving their cities and coming to, to the farm. When they arrive at the farm, they go through another med medical checkup to see if they are in good health, in good conditions to be working at the farm. Uh, on top of that, what we, what we have, what we are we're doing right now, we have reduced uh, the agglomerations of people in many different parts 
of either the work or, or their everyday operations of the farm. So for example, you, you know, we send buses to the city to bring the workers from the city to the farm. So the buses, they are working at with half capacity. So we are not putting everyone in the same bus. We have half of the bus capacity and alternating seats. So we have more, it's more difficult for the workers to, to spread anything to each other. Before they get into the bus, we, we check the temperature of those, those workers as well. So if someone is not looking like uh, it's in good shape, this person is not allowed to go into the bus. So this also avoids any kind of contamination. Uh, places that might have agglomerations, like for example, the cafeteria, where you guys have lunch with us when you are at the farm, usually, we have closed the cafeteria, so all the workers, even the ones in the office, if they have to be in the office, they are receiving their lunch in lunch boxes, so they can be spread when they, are, when they are eating and having their meals as well, so we don't have people in the same space. So lots of those things are being done at the, the farm to help uh, not disseminating, propagating any virus if the virus gets there, which is not the case at the moment. We didn't have any case of COVID in the whole company at the moment, and we, we intend to keep that way. Um, on top of that, what we are doing, we are doing lots of um, medical, we are giving lots of medical support and doing lots of campaigns at the farm to keep everyone aware about the situation. So as you know, we deal with many different levels of public at the farm. We have people that in the, in the, in the company that are well-educated and understand the problem, but you also have the people in the field that they don't have as much education. Maybe they are not taking the situation as seriously as they should. So we are trying to make them aware about the situation and how we can they, they can, they can avoid being infected as well. So our doctors in the company, they are doing lots of campaigns. They're doing lots of talks and trying to make them aware about the situation. Uh, we are giving them sanitary kits uh, for them to sanitize themselves at home before coming to work in the buses during their everyday activities as well, doing uh, campaigns with their families. We gave them kits with uh, gel alcohol and sanitary products, masks and all of that so they can, they can be safer. At the farm, we have made masks for all the workers. So all the workers, they, they have to use masks to, use, to work even if they are on the field or in, in some more uh, managing uh, position, they have to use masks during this time. And we are doing lots of things to make sure we are, will be able to keep harvesting the coffee and to be able to do what we need to do during this time to, to deliver the beans that you guys will expect us to deliver around August, right? So this is a little bit of what we are doing. The situation is spreading a lot in Brazil right now, but in our side at the farm is okay. And we have plans. That's one thing that I wanted to share with you. Uh, so even though it is a difficult situation, we, we are preparing ourselves for a long time now to be able to perform just like we should, okay? So I wanted to, to comfort you a little bit right now by sharing this with you, okay? Well, also other, any questions until this point? Anyone would like to ask any questions until this point from the, from the harvesting operations related to COVID? No? Okay. Yes, I have one, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just I wanted to know how it's gonna work in the, um, you know, for a new crop since, um, you know, like we have some, um, obviously, Business is slowed down. Some of the customers are not taking um, on time their contract. So, you know, I mean, it has been like six weeks like lockdown in the UK. We don't know still for long, but that means, you know, we are not releasing as many coffee as we are supposed to. Right. So basically, like Phil said, it will have a knockdown effect. So, you know, considering about that era where every year we work on new crop during like July um, time, uh, to promote it uh, with the first shipment around September, October, depending on the on the year. 
um, how how that terror I and mean, how is going to be like did you think about it how it's going to work this year you know like considering like we might need the coffee a bit later than usual because we're going to have to use some of the stocks that we have currently because it's not uh, being released um did you discuss about this or how you know like in terms of operational how are you going to work on that with importers Okay, we have uh, lots of proposals for for importers and partners, and I'm gonna share some of them with you now. And I'll I'll give you an overview. And if if you if the it's not if your question is not answered, I will I'll clarify that later. Okay. So what what we are thinking to do right now? So as, as I as I told you told you, we started thinking about this a long time ago. On our side, we have the plans and we know the farm is going to be operating just like it should with all those plans into place. But we understand that the situation is going to affect a lot the market, it's going to affect a lot the roasters, it's going to affect a lot the importers and everyone in the chain. And we feel we are responsible as well. We should take our part. This situation uh, is a, situa a situation that we have never lived before and it requires us to think out of the box. And more, more than that, it requires us to be able to cooperate and to be able to think how we can relate to each other in a more cooperative, collaborative way. So we came up with a few ideas that I would like to share with you uh, that answer uh, some things that you have asked, some things that Kanematsu has asked as well. And and I, I think that we we are we are doing a, a lot towards trying to to mitigate the, the problems for for us and and for you as well. So first of all, uh, thinking about the the ideas that we had, we really wanted to to understand how we could help you, how we could help our partners, how we could help the roasters. That's the reason why we sent the letter to get the information to really understand what was going on in the market so we could build solutions, so we could build, build proposals that would uh, be reasonable and, and would make sense for you and for us as well. So first one that we have created, we heard from lots of roasters that they were struggling because they were selling coffee, they were selling some coffee online, but many roasters were not buying coffee. People sorry, many roasters were not roasting coffee, so people not always know they are still operating. We heard from them that many people were choosing to buy the coffee in the supermarket and not the, buying the coffee from them anymore uh, because it's just easier. They are panic buying. They're going to the supermarket, buy, doing their grocery purchases. So they grab a coffee in the shelves and they just go home. And they needed those sales, even though they were not a, as much as enough, they needed those sales. So what we wanted to do is, how can we, we make people aware that those roasters are still working? They are still operating. So I don't know if you, if you saw the, the list from Sprudge. Sprudge is a communication channel, worldwide communication channel that launched a list of roasters that are still working during the outbreak. So they did that uh, about a month ago. And we decided to do something similar to our roasters as well. We are calling this the Big Stock Project. So if you guys, we shared that with you already. I don't know if any of you hasn't seen that. So we, we shared with our roasters, the, with our partners, this, this list. So the idea is roasters, they are still operating. They are still working during the COVID outbreak. Uh, they can go into the list. They, we, can, we will say, we'll tell our followers, we'll tell people that follow the terror around the world. We have a good following around the world of people that love coffee, people that like the terra. So this list is meant to make people aware that those roasters are still roasting and operating during the outbreak. So we put their names on the list, what coffees they are roasting at the moment from the terra. And we wanted to make this more than just a commercial, a sales, uh, a sales project. As you guys know, we don't like to, we don't like to make something just only commercial we like to attach everything to a cause we like to attach things to the future as well we feel that right now 
we have a huge challenge, which is the COVID outbreak, and everyone is looking at it a lot, which is okay because we do have a big challenge to, to overcome right now. But at the same time, we are not looking at anything else that is not COVID. So what's gonna happen after the, the outbreak is over? Have we, have we done anything else than trying to address COVID? How is the, the world gonna be? We, are we doing any sustainability projects? So we try to attach that to sustainability as well and also to incentivize people to buy coffee from those roasters. They are buying the terra and they are operating. We created the Beanstalk project. So for every, ro for every kilo of the terra that those roasters on the list sell during the outbreak, we're gonna plant a tree. So Isabella is gonna explain a little further to you what this, this project means. It's a big project that we are, we, are, we are doing at the farm. So the idea was sort of creating more awareness about the roasters that are working, showing the roasters some, some support, showing we care about them, trying to, to, to make public that they are still working and creating something nice from it. So, okay, this is a bad situation, but how can you, we use it in a nice way? And the, the tree planting thing uh, is one of those things. So if you haven't checked on the, on the list, the list is growing every day. Uh, we talked to the roasters yesterday and they said that they are very happy with this project because they can use this as marketing as well. So while they are promoting on social media, they are promoting to their clients that they are still working during the outbreak, they can also say, hey, and if you buy this coffee from me, you are going to be helping the world after the outbreak. So this is the first action. This is more directed to the roasters, the Beanstalk project. If you want to take a look on the site, the hot site that we have done for it, it's uh, supportcoffeeroasters.com, the address, okay? Next action. Next action is more related to you guys. So it's about the seedling program. So as you know, a few years ago, we launched the seedling program. The idea of the seedling program is a rebate program, is a sort of loyalship program for you guys. So every time you guys do any marketing action related to the Terra, the Terra is gonna give you points, seedlings, and those seedlings in the end will convert into discounts, into money that you can use for marketing actions in the future. We understand, it, we understand that you are selling less coffee than usual. So this means that you probably are gonna have less, um, money available for investment, for investing in marketing actions in the future. And marketing actions are important because we, if we stop communicating, if we, we, people will stop, stop buying as well. So how could we keep this, this support to you guys, even in this difficult situation? Even because right now there are no trade shows going on, the public cuppings are not going on. So lots of the marketing actions that you were doing in the past, you are not being able to, to keep doing them because people are at home, they're not being able to, to participate, to engage in your marketing actions. So we want to have done, we have doubled, we had offered, offered you the possibility of any actions that you do right now, they are gonna, they're gonna have double the points, double the seedlings, because that will give you at the end, bigger rebate amounts for you to use in marketing actions in the future. We didn't want to take the benefit out of you. So that's why we are increasing it right now by making it easier for you to get the seedlings, for you to get the points in the, in the relationship program that we have with you. So that's the second uh, project that we have done, more in the marketing side. Also in the communication side, we are thinking and we are already doing some very nice actions for approximating the farm to partners, to roasters and consumers, but remotely. So every year you guys come to the farm, you visit us, you bring your clients to the farm as well. And we usually say this is the best way to, to sell the farm, showing what we are doing, showing our people, showing our work. That's the best way to engage people in what the Terra does and make sure they're gonna be interested in buying our coffee. But nobody's gonna come to the farm this year because harvesting is about to start and the outbreak's not over yet. People are not traveling. So how can, if you guys are not coming to the farm, 
you're not going to be showing the farm to your clients through your social media, through your Instagram. If you guys, your clients are not coming to the farm, how we can make sure they're going to be still close to the farm, still close to our product, still close to what we are doing. So we are doing lots of actions. We are already starting to do them right now to approximate your clients, your roasters to the farm. So we're going to be launching some videos, uh, some marketing packages for you to, to use with your clients as well. This meeting is one of those actions, how we can keep close to you even though we are not there or you are not here as well. Uh, we are producing infographics with information about the farm so you can share that with your clients. So lots of different uh, communication pieces that you can use to keep people still uh, aware about our partnership with you and the Terra as well. So that's another action that we are doing right now. Well, and more specifically, uh, one thing that we changing the subject a little bit and going more to the financial side now. We understand that all of you are selling less coffee. We understand that some roasters, even though you said that's not everyone that is that is not keeping the contracts, we understand that some roasters are canceling contracts, are postponing contracts, are asking for better uh, payment terms on their side, of course. We we feel that it's also our responsibility to, to help you going through that. So you, your business is successful, your business can strive during this time and ours as well. So one thing that we're gonna be doing right now, um, so all of you, you have coffees contracted with us, still from the 2019 crop, right? That's gonna be shipped until September, October, whatever, November, you, you, you have coffee contracts, coffee shipments coming from Brazil to you in the next few months. So those contracts, they already have a negotiated price that we have set with you prior to this conversation here. But what we're going to be doing, all the contracts that you have with us that are not shipped yet, we're gonna be reducing the prices on all those contracts, okay? So, it, it, those are substantial reductions that we are doing for those contracts because this is something that we, we, we understand that has to help you, has to help the roasters as well. So, as you guys know, uh, and Noguchi-san, I know why you asked this to us, uh, we are not, we don't do discounts very often at the Terra. We understand that we produce a specialty product. We understand we produce a product that is different. And the coffee that we are selling to you now, we started producing this coffee four years before it's available to you. So that's why we don't have a policy of discounting prices at the Terra, especially in the specialty levels a lot. But we believe this is our responsibility to make sure that you guys are going to be well during this time as well. So we don't see these as discounts, but we see these as a reduction, as, a, as sharing our profit with you guys. So pretty much from our margin, from our margins in the coffee, we are cutting down our margins so we can share a little bit of the margin with the roasters, especially. Because the roasters are going through a very, very difficult times. You are going through difficult times as well. So, again, all coffees that are not shipped, we're going to reduce the price on those contracts. Uh, just when we finish this meeting, we're going to start working on, on updating the contracts so we can send those contracts to you. And for all the coffees that are yet to be shipped from the previous crops that you have contracted with us, you're going to have a new price already after this meeting, okay? And this is something that we are doing to you, but we really want to ask something to you, which is please extend these discounts to the roasters as well. So we, are, we, we need you in this process of keeping our roasters alive, of keeping our coffee industry alive. 
So we are discounting the price right now of these coffees. We, we are doing this because we believe this is right, but we believe you guys should also extend. If we are cutting down the price, this should go to the roaster as well. Because if we discount the price to you and you don't pass on this discount on contracted coffees to your roaster, this action is not going to work. They are going to still struggle. They are still going to have issues uh, being able to survive during these difficult times. Any questions on this specific point? Uh, actually, yeah. It's totally like, you know, it's, uh, thanks so much, you know, for sharing this and giving always like that there are good uh, ideas and supports. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask is like, yeah, definitely is to pass it on to roasters, but as well, instead of like discount, it will help not to increase because for instance, like some customers delaying contract, so we have to pass on to them some carrying charges, uh, which unfortunately really like the cost of what it is, which is gonna maybe add you know, uh, extra costs. So knowing that, that means for sure it will not increase and uh, if it's not delayed too much, definitely discount it as well to rosters. Yeah. I think you guys are, you know your business as well and you know what are the necessities of each relationship that you have with those different rosters. So if we are giving the discount on those contracted coffees, your roaster already received the price for this coffee from you as well. So if you could come up, if you could come to your roaster right now you calculate the discount that we are giving and you can extend some of this, this discount to him, that is the way to go. Again, we believe that this is a problem that is going on in the whole industry. It's a crisis that is affecting your businesses, it's affecting our businesses, and it's affecting the roasters' business as well. Especially the smaller ones, they don't have cash flow, they don't have, uh, they, they have more difficult situations more difficult financial situations to go through this. So if even though you gave the price to these roasters already, if you could come to them right now and say, hey, in those Terra coffees that you have contracted, now you are discounted this much and you are the ones that are going to make the calculation, you are the ones that are going to make, are, are going to be able to give them what is the best price that's going to work for you, for them and for us, we are already giving you, okay? So what is the price that we are discounting and giving you? Uh, one thing that is important to highlight that I didn't say before, this discount is for our coffees, that are the Terra Classics and collection of Terra Coffees, okay? On the commercial level below 80, our margins are already very little and we would not be able to discount on those. Um, but we know that again, Specialty is the market that's going to struggle more during this time. So for all these coffees, they are more expensive. We're going to give those discounts. And one thing that is interesting also to say is the discounts are bigger. The more, the higher the the coffee is on our menu. So the more expensive coffees get bigger discounts. And so the higher the coffee is, the bigger the discount is. And uh, the, the, not the discount, sorry, I don't like the word discount. <laughs> the reduction is. And so again, it's, we are trying to, to make our part on helping you guys and helping the roasters. So please, we depend on you to pass it on and to help the chain, to help the market, not just our, our part of the chain, right? Okay, the next idea, that we have uh, on this same subject is we, as we said, as you guys said, as we explained in our summary as well, we know that right now, specialty industry is going to go through a very difficult time. The higher specialty industry, even bigger, the lower specialty industry is going to struggle and the commercial industry is going to survive. So. We believe that during these times of crisis, as uh, noguchi son I think, said, people need coffee. People need to drink coffee. People need those small self-indulgences that keep them hopeful, that keep them alive. People are staying at home. They are drinking more coffee. They need the coffee. And we want people to have great coffee. So we don't want them to have just the supermarket shelf, shelfless coffee that is 
not of very high quality. We want people to have access to those coffees that makes that make them happy as well. So because of that, we are also doing reduction on all the coffees that we have in inventory right now on the specialty side, okay? So we still have the Terra Classics, we still have the Terra Collection coffees to offer in our inventories right now, and we want to support the market to keep drinking great coffee, drinking really good coffee during the outbreak. People need that. People need coffee during these times. So if these coffees are too expensive for the roasters to buy, the roasters are not gonna make this coffee available for the people and the people are not gonna buy it. So the only way that we can allow people to still have access to the best coffees we have at the Terra is by reducing the prices of those coffees as well. So uh, we have coffee, specialty coffee, great coffee, and we want people to have access to it. So, and we are reducing even more the prices for coffees that are not contracted. So we are reducing the price for the contracted coffees and we're reducing more the prices for coffees that we have in inventory right now. So if any roasters that are working with you are thinking of maybe buying some coffee but they don't have, that they think it's too expensive, we're gonna reduce those prices as well to support them to have it, okay? So just after this, this meeting is over, uh, probably until the end of this week, we're gonna send you the new price list. As you know, in the beginning of the year, we make a price list and then we keep that price list all year around. We don't change the prices around the year. This year we are changing it. So you are gonna get a new price list with reduced prices. The reduction is bigger than the reduction on the contract coffees. So if any of you has any necessities of buying more coffee, we want to make it easier for you and those prices are gonna be better uh, than, than in the beginning of the harvesting season, okay? So we're gonna get these new prices as well. Again, it's very important and we count on you, we need you to pass on these reduced prices to your clients so they can also benefit from that and be able to keep buying coffee and offering specialty coffee to their clients. Because if we go too much down, maybe in the future, we're not going to be able to bring back the specialty industry to where it was in terms of consumption. We need to keep supporting that. Again, for the next uh, crop, uh, we are, har are going to start harvesting right now. So it's still difficult to say and give you the prices yet, but don't worry, we are, we are thinking about that as well, okay? So we are doing this now already with the contracted coffees, the inventory coffees that we have from the current crop. For the new crop, we are also thinking of conditions that we will allow people to have access to the best quality of the Terra and not just letting them just go down in terms of quality. People need specialty coffee. That's something that's very important to us and we want to give them access to that, okay? Those are the actions that we thought of by hearing all of you, by listening to, to your pains, to, what, to the challenge that you and the roasters are going through. Some are more specific, more financial related. The others are more marketing, communication, and purpose related. But what we want to, what we want to make clear to you guys is we want to do something. We want to, to show the market we are moving towards doing something for them and taking, walking our part of the bridge to, to supporting the market to keep surviving and go through this. So pretty much that's what we thought for now. We are still thinking these uh, very complicated times are actually making us very creative, very innovative. So if you guys have any suggestions, if you have any pains, any difficulties, any challenges, you know that the channel is open and you can always communicate with us so we can think of solutions together, okay? Let's stop talking about COVID now. We are all fed up talking about COVID, I believe. So let's talk about the harvest a little bit. Uh, 2020 harvest. We're going to start harvesting the coffee in about two weeks. We are already doing some hand picking on the early varietals. It's still a very, very small volume. Those are the exotic varietals that we have that they start maturing much earlier. But the harvest itself usually starts around the 
around mid-May to the end of May. So we're going to start harvesting those coffees very soon. What is the forecast for this year in terms of, of harvesting the terra? So good production. This year we're going to have a good production in terms of volume. So we are foreseeing something around 85,000 bags of coffee, maybe, maybe a little bit above that. We don't want to put that on, in stone right now because of all the situations. Maybe if something happens, there might be a flexibility in this number, but it should be something around 85,000 bags. Uh, so the production is going to be good. We're going to have good volumes for, for you guys to provide coffees to the markets that you are working at. And in terms of quality, the quality is looking like it's looking like it's going to be a very good year for, for quality as well. So we had good rains, we had good temperatures, nature uh, was pretty good this year. So from the cuppings our quality team has already done to assess the quality of what's coming up from the fields, it's looking like it's going to be a very good year for quality. Also in terms of bean development, the beans have developed very well because of good rain amounts. So they are in good size as well. We're not going to have problems with screen size. In terms of pests, it looks like it's a very good controlled year in terms of uh, coffee borer, for example. So thankfully, we have some good news <laughs> in this whole situation. So uh, at least coffee is on the trees. It's growing well. It's tasting good, developing well, regardless of everything else that's happening. This is a problem that we don't have to deal with this year. The harvest is gonna be is gonna be good. We we are foreseeing that for this year. So you should be receiving samples very soon. As soon as we as we have them, we're gonna communicate about the new the new harvest. Okay. So some good news. We're talking about the present a lot. We're talking about the situation, this challenge that we are facing right now, and how it's. Uh, making us think our businesses, think our operations in different ways, how it's making us to be innovative, creative, and inventive as well. Uh, but all those inventions, all those creations, they are very directed to now, to the moment now. And we want to talk a little bit about the future now. So what about after the outbreak? How is the world going to be after the outbreak? Uh, you know, when you are in a, in a war, a country is in a war, the country stops everything, stops investing, in lots of different sectors because it has to focus just in that specific problem they have to face. This is sort of the situation we are facing right now. So we are thinking a lot about this COVID situation, which is sort of a war operation as well. How can we keep thinking about the future during these times as well? So I would like to invite Isabella now to talk about some future projects, some sustainability projects that we are developing at the farm. And we want to share those projects with you because we believe those projects in these very complicated times, they bring a nice message, nice good news to the market that you can share with your clients. And this can also help you selling your coffee. How can you use everything that we are doing here, thinking about the future, so you can also perform better and offer our coffee to the industry. So Isabella. Thank you, Gabriel, for all the presentation. Thank you to all the clients that shared with us all your uh, concerns and possibilities. Um, when we were planning this, this meeting, uh, we were also very worried about uh, the concept of sustainability because I was addressed uh, by some people asking questions like, now with the COVID, are you still going to be sustainable? Or are you still going to be practicing sustainability? And for me, it was kind of weird because more than ever, sustainability is relevant and is important. First, because uh, maybe what's going on right now is due to something that we, as a global population, did something maybe wrong or maybe not enough. And also because it's actually now that we need to be more focused and even more real to the concept of sustainability. So. Uh, because you know, you know that sustainability has been in our soul since the beginning, uh, we were very, very much worried on how we should do something really, really relevant to improve the situation of the planet, 
related to our coffee production. So what we found is that we needed to do something that was better than we were doing. We, did, we must did do something faster, but above all, we must do it together. If we don't actually globally and together with you guys, with the roasters, we cannot do something really better. From the farm point of view, we stated a concept called BioSmart Farming. And what does that mean? It means that it's not enough only preserving forests, for example, planting the trees that you've been planting when you go to the farm, or preserving the native plants. We need to regenerate it. We need to plant more. And by thinking about it, uh, we came up with a project called a Trillion Project. I don't know if you're familiar with the need of the planet to have trillions of trees planted, but the Terra is committing to be a forest builder. And we will invite you to be part of this, to help us do this. So this Trillion Project is part of our uh, Forest the Terra platform that we will include many programs. One of them is the Beanstalk Project, the other is the trees that you've been planting in the farm. And you will be invited also to help us plant more trees in the farm and in the city of Patrocinio, in the city of Franca, teaming up with the community, with school, with children. So uh, we will share with you along this year a dashboard uh, that will tell you where we are planting these trees, where your trees are being significant and many, new, many other new suggestions and ideas to help reforest at least the area where we plant coffee. And also it's really, it would be really helpful if you could share with us if you have any ideas to be included in this kind of dream. So this uh, Trillion project is a very uh, big project is really relevant for us. It's, uh, of course, it will be used and can be used as a marketing tool, but it is previously thinking, is previously thought based on what Daterra should do to improve the reforestation of our area. Uh, so, you know, we already planted 350,000 trees in the area with Franca, in Franca, most of you know there. It was a partnership with an NGO with children, and we will share some pictures for you. Um, following the idea of being a bio-smart farming, uh, we also know that it's not only enough to manage the soil as to be what it is right now. You know that we depend on the soil for coffee security, for any agribusiness security. And most of you have heard about the Bioterra research and all the experiments that we've been doing the farm. We will be devoting more time to learn about microbiology and all the aspects that it interferes in the development of the soil. You know that soil is not only important for fertility, but also for nitrogen fixation and to help the, reduce the CO2 in the atmosphere. So these three importance, fertility, CO2, and nitrogen, are the pillars to motivate us to invest more and faster on the Bioterra project. But uh, these uh, actions that we've been taking is not, it's really more focused on the product and on, a, on, on the coffee and the agri, agricultural point of view. Uh, what we've been perceiving so far is that a business, as, and especially a farm, that is known as uh, use a lot of water um, and also um, use a lot of soil and has a lot of labor, uh, we need to do the business so healthy and so positive to create a good impact in the planet as a business, much more than the product. And I don't know if you are familiar with the term B Certified or B Corp, which is a global movement that started in 2011 or 12 in the United States, but is global. And it certifies company 
that use your business as a force for good. Uh, they don't go to the farm, it's not a physical evaluation, you do an assessment online, but and it can be done by any company. A small business, like a travel agency of one person, to a Patagonia company, for example, as you know, or Ben and & Jerry, and you can check that on their website. So when I learned about this movement in 2015, uh, it actually um, attended to what Dateha was looking for in terms of evolution in sustainability. So in 2016, we became uh, the first coffee farm to be certified by B Corp. We are the only one in Brazil. And one of the, the good things about being a B Corp is that you can push and you should push the chain to make your business as a, a, a positive force to engage your suppliers and your customers. So we already have uh, a full coffee chain and Afonso is here if he can uh, and say something. Uh, we exported coffee through Sustainable Harvest which is a bee imported in the US. They sold to Equator Coffee, which is a roaster and has coffee shops in San Francisco. So we have a full B Corp from seed to cup. We also have one uh, client in Germany called Coffee Circle. And we believe that being a B certified coffee can be, is growing, the, no, the knowledge is growing. And uh, we believe that this can also add value to coffee, to the food chain that actually can help maybe sell differently, improve the coffee chain and do specialty projects together. So I won't take any longer to talk about B Corp. Uh, if you have any interest in that, um, in, in making specialty projects, you can you have my email and the whole Dataha team knows about it. So you can contact me to, so we can develop projects specific with that. Um, I'm also part of the board of the movement in Brazil. So I wanted to join the board also to learn deeper the concept and if it's really worthwhile doing this. Um, so this is really important to us. We also decided to commit to the SDG goals, the 2030 agenda. And we are preparing the, a document that we will share with you to address all the goals that Aterra is committed to by producing coffee for a better planet. Um, I end up my, my presentation asking also you to answer two questions that I believe it will be very important for us, but also to improve the sales and the marketing and the communication along this period and for the future. So the first question would be, what uh, sustainability, um, what, how, how sustainability can actually increase your sales? Because we've been talking a lot about it. We talked about Rainforest Alliance for many times, but we know that the word sustainability is kind of tricky. It gives so ample meaning that uh, we, you actually don't know how to use it in terms of, com of communication, specifically with different countries, different cultures. So uh, first, I want to know if you consider sustainability a value that can increase your sales. If so, what would be the three subjects or the three most important aspects of sustainability that we as the Terra can help you add to your product or to a service. Very specific if, if you can do that as well. So also you can answer these, these questions by, by email or if you think we can make a, uh, a meeting about it. We are always, always more than open to talk and discuss about special projects that will improve the concept of sustainability. But more than that, believing that the, we need to be more engaged and, actual, and act more interdependent to help not only we cross this problem that we are facing right now, 
but find a more sustainable and um, and a strong business position after the the crisis goes on. So I thank you very much, uh, and then I, I will invite Luis now to to do the wrap up of this of this meeting, Luis. Hi guys, thanks for being with us all these two hours. Thanks for everyone. And I have to, I understand some of your comments and what I am really, yesterday we had a, a, a long and talk with some of our customers too, today and putting together. Um, I, I, I said yesterday something that I will uh, uh, really uh, uh, say it again today is that I believe the coffee coffee became a social event plus a tasting event. And um, everyone that is at home uh, that had good coffee during the last five or 10 years we will we'll be demanding better coffee now because when we will suffer this kind of uh, uh, disruption in our lives, we give more value to love, to family, to friends, to people we trust, and the coffee we trust. So this is my first comment on, on this um, exchange. I think coffee is going to be more and more valuable uh, not only the drink, the coffee itself, but the the coffee place, the coffee tasting sections. I believe in 60 days from now, uh, our industry will go back to where we were. Maybe a little bit different in how we serve or how we get everyone in our coffee shops or in 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 the tasting sections, but. Uh, life in the coffee arena will go back. The only thing that I would ask you, if you can help us, is this. Isabella was explaining about sustainability. And, um, and uh, uh, I, would, I wish you could send us what means the word sustainability to you, our, our customers, our friends that knows the terra farms very well, but also how your customers value sustainability. What is sustainability for them? Because I am a little bit curious that uh, sustainability is a very interesting word. Many people understand it as economical sustainability or other kinds of sustainability. And we are very, very uh, aware of the climate change, as Isabella said, and uh, we would like to have your opinion on what means sustainability for your customers. Um, this third issue that I, I believe is an important issue is how uh, we can put all of you together uh, and the frequency can be your choice. Uh, so you, as part of our network, all over the world could talk uh, like, uh, you know, as you had today. So instead of uh, the Terra being presenting, also if each one of you would have, you know, five minutes to, to speak, to open your hearts, to say what are the challenges. So the Terra would be making available these events for our customers to exchange ideas and not uh, less important, but finally, if you could tell us what coffees you like around the world and what are the coffee producers that we can invite in our producers exchange to help coffee producers all over the world, that is what we really believe is our main responsibility. Even being a coffee producer, we have to help other producers in the world with sustainability concepts, production concepts. We are just now starting this week a new kind of uh, drying uh, system that uh, we are going to have uh, um, 
a, a very unique uh, technology to support small producers all over the world to have high quality, even if in rainy areas or, or, or not sunshine skies, uh, we are just testing. I approved the test yesterday. It's, um, it's, um, it's a very simple thing to do, but I believe for small and good farmers, sustainable farmers all over the world, uh, uh, will be, a, will be a, a fantastic system. Uh, we blended technology by using uh, uh, L LED lights. Uh, we have uh, uh, a plastic a special cover for rainy days or, or during the night. We, so we, we developed something that will be very good for small producers, you know, gourmet producers. Uh, it's not expensive. And we maybe we can have this um, um, product tested in the beginning of this crop. And in three weeks, we will be uh, everything we do. Uh, we try to, exp to 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 really understand to do research. Now we have a three week uh, scenario to get a, an answer. So I believe in three weeks from now we have an answer for this kind of um, uh, technology, and we can send to you, and you can send this technology to your customers, all to your suppliers all over the world so they can try also during this crop to use this technology. It's a technology technology for small farms, for a small, you know, family farms even, but I believe it will help a lot uh, to improve quality during drying process. And we reduce time too. Uh, this system is, is uh, we are spending with a lab in, in, in Piracicaba, in University of Piracicaba for the last three years, using this concept of LED light to improve the quality for coffee. Now we have the first trial. The research will be done, as I said, starting yesterday. And we've been for the three weeks and I, I would love to share with you. But also, how can we help your suppliers from countries like Kenya, Ethiopia, you know, uh, Honduras, we are helping I, I think Gabriel can tell more about that. We are helping a cooperative in Honduras, and they are they are very nice people, and we'd love to have uh, you know uh, something together then to help them to survive this this real difficult days from from their you know their difficulties. And uh, they are very nice people. They came to our farm uh, two years of uh, two or. Two Three years ago, Isabella Gabriel, I can't remember, I think two, three years. And uh, they came to the exchange, I, three years, three years. So we are trying to help. We have someone, where is the, the guy with this, the daughter that knows us very well? Is from Costa Rica or Colombia? Uh, Costa Rica, Costa Rica. Costa Rica. So maybe we, we, our responsibility as the Terra is not only to serve good coffee, but sustainable coffee and be also helping other farms all over the world, even in Brazil, to do a better job for the market and for themselves. So this is the fifth fifth uh, uh, thing that I would share with you. And if, if you have any questions on these five ideas I have, please be, op be open to ask me. If you don't didn't understand, please ask me. And I will be glad to try to explain better what are these five steps that we want to go? Any comments? Um, uh, Luis, uh, this is Giovanna. How are you? <laughs> I need you, Giovanna. Good. So, uh, is this a producers retreat uh, something that you that you done uh, that you do uh, often? Is it every two years, like you do with the partners? Uh, yeah. And is it something then that we could openly suggest someone that we already work with to be in contact with you? Or is it something a bit more remote these days? Do you see it going now a bit more remote? Or do you have plans maybe for next year to, to do it again uh, physically? Yeah. It's a philosophy. How to help your, cust your, your suppliers, uh, coffee customers. And Gabriel can, can join them right now 
and I believe Gabriel will explain to you better. Go, yeah. go, go ahead. Uh, actually, Giovanna, the first time we did the partners exchange, which is this meeting that we are doing here, we did it at the farm. And then at the end of the partners exchange, we asked our, our partners, at the time we were not working for Maritera yet, we asked our partners what would be their, what suggestions they had, how they, how they would see the Terra helping the system, helping uh, the coffee production system, the coffee market. And then at that time, I think uh, Priscilla and Simon from the Air Wakefield, they were at the, the Partners Exchange and they said that a nice idea would be doing the same kind of program we were doing with our partners, but with producers because they could think about a few names, a few producers that they were working with that would benefit a lot from participating in a group like this, like you, we are doing with you guys, of knowledgeable coffee people uh, that are peers, they are in the same part of the, the coffee industry, which is the production part, and that they could discuss the challenges they are facing in their, in their countries in terms of production, marketing, sales, and so on and so forth. So from that first partners exchange, we created the growers exchange. So we asked each of you guys, each, each of the companies that we work with, to nominate one partner that you, that you work, that you think that has a, a similar philosophy to, to what we are doing. And at the time, Maritera actually nominated Heliana from Moplaco. So Heliana is the, uh, from Ethiopia. She, she came to our last, part, our last growth exchange. And we also went to Ethiopia as well to visit our facilities over there. And so each person here, each company that is in this meeting here has nom nominated someone. Kanemasu has nominated Guatemala, Pedro, uh, Coffee Holding, who is also in this meeting, has nominated Viviana and Don Ricardo from Fica Miramonte in Costa Rica. Maritera has nominated Eliana from Ethiopia. Uh, so each of you, Wakefield has nominated the people from Honduras, from Café Lol, and each of you has already given someone to participate in the meeting. But yes, we are open to taking new people that share the same philosophy that would like to sit down with us and discuss what are the challenges we are facing in our, in our production structures and our sales structures how can we keep producing coffee 100 years from now that's the main the main question that drives all our meetings with our producer partners the next growers exchange is gonna have well if everything works as expected uh our plan is doing it in december this year because since we have done the growers exchange for two years in brazil already for two, two, two editions, every two years we do it. We did it two times in Brazil. Next, the next meeting, the guys from Costa Rica have invited us to go to Costa Rica instead of doing it in Brazil. So the plan is doing it in December in Costa Rica. So if things go back to normal soon, we should keep the plans uh, and we are already organizing and, and working on it. And if you have anyone that you would like to, to nominate that is not in this group that I just mentioned, which was the, the, the original group that you guys have, have nominated, we are super open to that. Thanks for everyone, the Terra team, and our great friends and customers. With you, we can teach more, we can learn more, and we can spread the concept of uh, sustainable coffee even better. Thanks again for all of you. Thank you very much, guys.